<laughs> Hello and welcome to the Heroes by the Pint podcast. This is a nerd life podcast under the influence of craft beer. We're the Glassy Eyed Geeks and we invite you to grab something cold in a bottle or glass. You know what time it is. I'm your Matt. I'm your host, <laughs> Matthew Ellis. I'm your Matt. He's yeah, your Matt man, as Matt. well. Don't uh, call him Matt. <laughs> don't call him Matt. <laughs> Joining me is Ryan Brown. Yo, yo. And Chelsea Caslow. Hey, hey. All right. We are so excited about this episode. We uh, pretty pumped. We're going to be jumping into the show rundown in just a little bit. But before we do that, we're going to be kicking it over to Flora, Sarah Flora. You can follow her at Flora Brewing on Instagram. She has sent, in a, sent us some homebrew all the way from L.A., soon to be in the Washington State area. And we are super excited to be drinking some of Flora's homebrew. So there's no better person to do the beer read than Flora herself. We are kicking it over to our beer correspondent now. Remember, this segment is sponsored weekly by Shirts on Tap. You head over there before you check out. Make sure you enter that promo code HBTP. You will get $13 off your first box. That's coming in at just $5 for your first box package. And it's a good deal. It's a good deal. It's a steal. It's a steal. Yeah. If you thought how soft those shirts are. Those, shirt, those shirts are nice. Those shirts are nice. All right, Sarah, we are coming at you right now. All right, we are kicking it over to Sarah Flora. Thank you so much for joining us once again. It has been incredible having you as a beer correspondent for the last 30 days. And what are we drinking this week? So you have my Tangerine Road Rush, which is loosely based on one of my favorite meat beers by a Lost Coast Brewing up in Eureka, California. Um, it's got, let's see, it's, got Cascade hops, which is the only bittering in it, and it's at a very late stage. It's at 10 minutes, so um, it's not very bitter at all, uh, but it's got a ton of tangerine flavor, mainly because I use, um, I basically use a quart of tangerine juice, and um, I've got 150 grams of tangerine zest in it, so it's I basically zest all of the tangerines I juice. Um, it's also got some coriander in it um, for a little surprise, but uh, it's one of my favorites that I make. It's so good. We've really enjoyed all of your home brews. And what else are we drinking this week? Um, I also sent you some of my uh, grapefruits of wrath. The name is actually a play on uh, one of Gary Goldman's stand-up specials. Uh, just look it up. He has a thing about hating grapefruit, but I thought it would be funny to commandeer it. Uh, but that basically is dry hopped with a bunch of tam- uh, grapefruit zest. Um, and it's pretty much a standard IPA, just with the addition of the grapefruit. But uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty high ABV. It's at 8%. So it's a it's a good drinker, but you got to be careful. Yeah, absolutely, you got to be careful. And uh, you're going to be coming back to join us on part two of our Ant Man and Wasp review, correct? Yeah. Absolutely, awesome, Flora. We look forward to hearing from you then. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Sarah. And I'm excited to jump into this beer right now and uh, get into a little bit of a bottle cap grade. We are opening these things up. They're exploding everywhere. <laughs> Literally everywhere. All over the floor. It's cool. She like drew on it. That's sick. Yeah. It's got like chalk, like, like chalk markers. That's so I want to know what used. she used yeah. uh, to do that. Very cool. We're going to have to Skype her back in. I know. On the back it says, this is a, a wheat beer by Flora Brewing. It's uh, what, 5.1%? Yeah, 5.1. Also handwritten on there. It's pretty sweet. And my thumbprint. That's a little, that's <laughs> a little, <laughs> that's a little uh, lighter than my home brew that we were just getting. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, Lord. Ellis. Yours was kind of malty. <laughs> that's pretty malty. Well, malty. <laughs> yeah, that's a good word for it. Very drunky. I was like, what's the what's uh, ABV on this? <laughs> I'm like, 29. <laughs> I got a P already. It's, <laughs> it's technically a wine. <laughs> it's a it's a barley wine. That's right. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'm just going full all out and hitting this tangerine wheat. 
with a five. Like, Flora has been awesome. She's hung out with us for a couple of times over this last 30 days, and it's super good. And I, I give mad props to anybody that's putting in work to homebrew and printing their own labels and yeah. hand drawing on the bottles and she, sending it to us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, and she just this made this her, it made it all the way across the country, man. Like, this, yeah. is, this is a good beer, man. Yeah, she that. just finished her logo, too. It looks pretty sweet. Yeah, <laughs> it is, it is real good. So, yeah, I'm hitting it with five. Where are you at, Chelsea? Um, you know, I love IPAs, so I'm really excited about the Grapefruit of Wrath with all these awesome hops that are in it. But for a wheat beer, this is delicious. It's good. So I'd go, very, I'd go 4.5. I think this is great, Flora. I'm going to go You're 5 because awesome. I'm, I'm not about to say 4.5. <laughs> I'm going to go 5 with that one. <laughs> like, you're awesome. Yeah. She is. She's the best. Yeah, Flora is. I just know that, that this is going to be where my heart is. And i got to leave some space for that. There you go. Yes. There you go. Yeah, open up that grapefruit. It's so a very very summer beer. Like, this is something that you can just chill and, and uh, chug. Yeah, that's <laughs> good. Yeah, yeah for that. sure. Happy yeah, Open Pounder. Happy Open Pounder. All right. So we're going to jump in to that show rundown in just a minute. Ryan's going to be hitting you with that. But before we do that, let's do the weekly uh, weekly rundown, man. How did how, you guys' week go? Fourth of July, everything? You guys having fun? Yeah, yeah. It's been it's been awesome. The Wednesday, how do you guys feel about the Wednesday, Fourth of July? Like, I don't, I don't know how I feel about that. Like, I came back Thursday, it was like Monday. Oh, yeah, you didn't work. Yeah, I, I had a whole <laughs> time. That's right. I came back Thursday, I was like, is this Monday? Or like, what, what is, where, what day am I? What month is this? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I tell you what, I'm not feeling too great about tomorrow because I know it's Monday morning. Yeah, it's I've been for, off for it's five for, days. It's for real Monday. <laughs> like <tomorrow. laughs> uh, we're sitting at the new digs, which I'm super excited about. We got an awesome our, job, uh, man. Awesome, awesome job. Yeah, homemade, uh, built, built desk for us, uh, upgrading left and right for the uh, podcast. And uh, it, it was really funny. Our producer and Chelsea were cruising by, and they saw me out in the garage. That was on the 4th of July. That was on the 4th of July. I was out there sweating it up. We were heading to the thing. comic shop, Secret Identity. That's right. That's Good right. book. Good book. I know, right? We were thinking of our 50s. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but you didn't read. That I haven't read. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Speculator. <laughs> and uh, they, they come up to me, and Chelsea's like, Oh, this looks awesome. She's like, it's almost like you're a carpenter. And I was like, yeah, I was for years a carpenter, actually. I think I was like, that's dope. That's cool. It's got well, it's got to <laughs> well, it reminds me of like one of my favorite jokes and a joke that I didn't get to deliver that I, I still am pretty remiss about. Well, deliver the hell out of yeah, it. Right? Well, uh, <laughs> so we were, we were sitting at home back when I was a carpenter. My favorite joke is I like to tell people I did the Lord's work, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Like Jesus himself. Amen. That's right. Exactly like it. So, uh, some uh, door to door. What are they? Jehovah's. 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 Yeah. And there were a couple of young ladies. And they're like trying to give us the spiel, you know. And like we we're just getting ready to head out. It was like Saturday night. We we're getting That's how it always happens. <laughs> <Right. laughs> and, uh, you know, I hit them with like, oh, yeah, I do the Lord. Work and you could tell they got like really uncomfortable and kind of quiet. And, like, <laughs> I was like, I'm a carpenter, and they're like, Oh, that is funny. <laughs> like, but the joke that I am still, I'm still upset that I didn't deliver is I wish I would have been like, Great, those strippers we ordered are here, guys. Come on in. <laughs> That's what I really wish I would have delivered. They would have yeah. left. Yeah, they probably so mission would've. accomplished. Left. Or they'd have felt like you really or, needed to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I've been like, all right. Well. So you're never too busy for the world. Now I just, now I just give them Heroes by the Fine cards now. I just hand them out. Like, yeah, they knock. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll take your card. you got to take mine. <laughs> Pull out your phone. Hit He's subscribe. Like, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Oh, yeah. That's absolutely right, man. Yeah. Chelsea, you had big news. You were at... Yeah. Uh, Tay Sweezy last night. I went to the oh, Tay Swizzle concert. That's right. the, best the most part. expensive concert like in I got, Ohio I history. I got free like, tickets, yo. Did you? Yeah. Oh, good for you. So I took my son. It was his Never first concert. He's seven. Don't get too excited. I saw where it took you. see that. Her nose is still bleeding. Right? <laughs> it's, it's great. I think you could see Tay Sweezy better from my house. Yeah. Chelsea was sitting. So a couple things happened that were hilarious. Um, the first was uh, Charlie XCX opened and she had on basically her underwear 
with a pink plastic suit over nice. that you could see through. Nice. And my son was like, do you think she knows we can see her? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to act knows. like I know who that is. Like, I'm like, oh, yeah. Uh, she no, sings, that's so, um, t- I mean, she whatever her name is. Like, oh, okay. So, I yeah. still, still have no clue. <laughs> and then Camilla <laughs> yeah, Cabello I... uh, was next, and Man. she sings Havana. And... Uh, she did a lot of um Man, what happened to country like Taylor? Latina dancing, like really sexy salsa dancing. <laughs> nice. And my son was like, Mom, she's a really good dancer. <laughs> I, <remember. laughs> I was like cracking up. I remember I remember when Taylor Swift opened for George Strait. That's Ooh. I'm getting old. I'm getting yeah, old. She, sang, uh, <laughs> she sang some stuff off of her uh, what was it, her Fearless album? Oh nice. Fearless yeah. 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 Both. No, yeah, nice. Dude, she played for two and a half hours. Oh, good for her. She's, she's always she killed it. Yeah, she's she was uh, she was out there somewhere. getting it done. And there was a big animatronic snake. Oh man. Yeah. Like, like Harry Potter snake. It like looked kind of like that. It was like <laughs> Cobra. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but no, like one of the one of the best parts was she got in this like uh, light up ball, and she was floating around, and he couldn't figure out how it was floating, and um, she kind of came up. You know, within 400 feet of us or whatever, mm. however far away we were. And it felt like she was close. And uh, there was this really eccentric gentleman in front of us who was there. Like, every song was his anthem, and he was getting it. You oh, know? I love that. And at the same time, he who, and my seven-year-old are waving to her, like, hey! <laughs> 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 Frantically. <laughs> it was just adorable. <laughs> I, was, I was dying laughing. Oh. So we had a blast. It was a good time. That's awesome. Sounds yeah. a lot different than my first concert. Yeah. First concert ever, Chubby Checker at the Delaware County Fair. Heck nice. Yeah, I remember my first concert. Uh, I almost threw up. Oh yeah. It was James Taylor. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and uh, my dad took me, and my dad had me on his shoulders, and he's like bouncing me up and down the whole time oh, to okay. fire and rain or whatever. <laughs> And I was a huge James Taylor fan, so we got up pretty close, and I was going to touch his hand, and then I almost puked. So I told my dad, Dad, I think I'm going to puke. And he immediately got me off his shoulders and took me back to my seat. Good job, Pops. (laughs) James James Taylor, James Taylor, the Carolina on my mind, James Taylor. That's the one. Oh, yeah. Old JT. Is there another one? That's the one and only. My cousin, his name's James Taylor, after James Taylor. We call him Jimmy, though. Nice, nice. Jimmy T. First, first concert, right? <laughs> oh man, you put me on the spot. I remember seeing, God, I don't even want it. Like one of the first things I remember, like going out to, was like I remember seeing Bill Cosby live, which that, that's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> like I shouldn't even, we brought, were, uh, I shouldn't have brought that up. That was, but you know, we before Bill Cosby. <laughs> yeah. You know what? The, you know what the thing is? There's a lot of people who don't remember seeing Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was rough. <laughs> Well, I think I think I think, Ken, I think Kenny Chesney was like one of my first ones. Like I yeah, I didn't get out very much. So. <laughs> you're talking about, you like this? Yeah, you're, talking about, you're talking about getting old. Dude, today. Kenny Chesney Kenny Chesney has been like he's been touring for like how many years? Dude, I saw like, Kenny Chesney when I was like sixteen. Yeah, it's like fifteen. I think I, I was like I, I'm thirteen when I went to the kind of Kenny Chesney concert. I, I'll say this, man, he might challenge Dwight Yoakam for the tightest jeans. Of the <laughs> They're tight. They're tight. They're tight. They're tight. I don't know, though, man. Dwight Yoakam had it down. I think those things were, like, sprayed on him. They're not even, like, real pants. Robert even Plant Tyler the wears the tight pants. Yeah. Robert Plant. I've Robert Plant had to touch touch his hand. <laughs> oh, nice. Did you puke? <laughs> I did hold a chick. She was like, I'm going to make out with him. I was like, all right. So I held her by her waist, and she had on a tube top because it was, like, Britney Spears era. And she was leaning over to the stage, and he came over to grab her hand, and she grabbed him by the back of the hair and made out with him. I was oh, like, oh, nice. man. She Not really, that I would want to make out with him. She really did it in the middle of, like, walk this way. No, Chelsea, nice. Chelsea actually didn't hold Steven Tyler's hand. It was just some elderly lady <laughs> that was up front with her. <laughs> she felt the connection. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's like, come here. It's turned around. It's I like, just, I can't I, believe I'm doing it. It's like, even, oh, wait, it's someone's grandma. I didn't even get to touch him. I just held the waist of a stranger while she made out. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> Not your greatest moment. <laughs> My parents were there, too. Oh, awesome. awesome. <laughs> Chelsea was holding her friend up while she was on her dad's shoulders to get her to puke. As she made out with Steven Tyler. Right. Not me. It was, it was an, an intense whole production. Whole production. 
Uh, all right, <laughs> Ryan's going to give us hit you with the show rundown in just a moment. Before we do that, we'd like to urge each and every one of you to head over to heroesbythepint.com. Over there, you'll find a backlog of all of our old episodes, as well as links over to all of our social media sites and links over to anywhere you prefer to stream your podcast. Scroll to the bottom of that page, click on that microphone banner, and hit us with a little bit of beer fun money. It goes a long way to supporting this podcast and keeping us going. And remember, what did we say at the beginning? Keep it five star. Keep it five star. Where's Marty at? Where's Marty at? asked Marty the other day, and he was like, I haven't been here in a while. You were like, like keep, we gotta put that. Five, let's let's get that out He's there. like, oh yeah. Five, 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 <laughs> twenty-five star. Twenty-five star. Keep That's twenty-five right. star. All right, Ryan. What are we talking this week? We're talking some Ant Man guys and yeah. girls and wasps <laughs> and wasp. Yeah, that's right. And wasp and wasp. Sure. Um, I, I think that's uh, that's our main that's our main topic this week, and let's dive into it, man. Let's. Uh, let's well, I, I gotta I gotta jump into it right here. Like my wife's not a superhero fan whatsoever. My daughters are like really into the superhero high, which is like great. So they're like really kind of gravitating towards like the superhero and the comic book world. But my wife, not whatsoever. Don't but she's like, like, she's like. That's the one with Paul Rudd, right? And I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm like, yeah, it's Paul Rudd. She's like, I want to see that. <laughs> do you? Do you really? What you do, baby girl. And, and I was talking to her, and I was like, so I mean, just like hit it with a number. I was like, where is Paul Rudd at in your like, you know, your superstar movie star free pass or like deserted island? Where is he at? <laughs> For you, you know, and I think she came out like he's top two. Oh wow! Damn. Yeah, yeah he's in my top. I'll tell you what. I, I leaned over to Ellis. Like, top five. Oh yeah. I leaned over to Ellis and I was like, Paul Rudd been hitting the weights, bro. Oh, you I, looked, he was. He, he looked he, a little, looking good. He almost looked a little too ripped for me. I like him skinny and weak. <laughs> <laughs> Chelsea just wants to know if it comes down to it, she can hold them down <laughs> yeah. and be like, <laughs> yeah. "No." <laughs> All right. Paul Rudd. Uh, he did look good. He looked really good. In that movie. Well, what I, what I loved the most too is I was talking about one, where uh, well, no, I, I mean, yeah, I was talking about one where uh, it's like you know he's got some bruise on his back and he's doing the like check out my abs pose mm. where he's like. You know, it'd be very easy to reach back with your right hand and just put the <laughs> ointment on and the band-aid. Right, right, right. But, you know, he's trying to reach it with his left hand as he's, like, cocking yeah, yeah, his right, right shoulder back and, and, like, and flexing. And straining. And, you know, someone's just, like, hosing him down with hot oil. The you bin, know, the and like, like, pose. Right, right. Right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but I, I can't hate on my old lady, man. Paul Rudd might be in my top two. Oh yeah, Paul Rudd is. He's a man. Him. He's a man crush for yeah, sure. Oh yeah, Why not? well because he's like sweet and funny. And right, right. He seems like <laughs> this sounds bad. He <laughs> seems attainable. <laughs> <laughs> like I could do that. Like that's, like, that's hot. possible. It's kind of hot that you're like you seem attainable. <laughs> that's right. It's not... you, look at, you look at people that are like real weird. You know, like um. Johnny Depp, right? And yeah. you're like, you're, okay, like that's, that's like, just no not going to happen. I'm not going to waste my time putting you in my top five. Like, no. Yeah. But Paul Rudd, yeah, that could happen. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, I mean, he's not Justin Bieber or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is Johnny Depp's type? Like, who knows? <laughs> I think his type is wine. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> like wine. It's like a like a feline or something. Like what yeah, is his what is his type? <laughs> like something weird. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Paul Rudd's great, man. He's yeah, just like, and he uh, continues in this movie. I, I I think he's he he's perfect for this role as Ant Man. Like yeah. he really is. You know, I was the like, I, I wasn't like super deep into the comic book world uh, when Ant Man One came out, and I was just kind of like seriously. I was like Paul Rudd. I think a lot of hero movie Ant Man. I was like, "What? Like this is too much." And then as I've just like completely gone off the the cliff's edge with the comic book life, and I think Ant Man might be my favorite installation of. I I don't know. I watched it the other day. I thought Yellow Jacket was a good villain. I, I I love Paul Rudd. I love the how they developed Scott Lang as Ant Man and. Hank Pym, I, I I loved Ant Man one, and it it's probably in my top five of the MCU. The other thing about Ant Man is, as people that have children, I mean, there's really not anything in it that your kids can't really see. 
I mean, maybe I'm missing, maybe I'm overlooking things, but no, there's I'm not like any, there's not a lot of like violence or, or like, you know, intensely romantic moments or anything like that. It's like, it's after we left Ant-Man Wasp, I was like, I feel like I could take my kids to see that. No, there's nothing the super thing. scary. Um, I mean, you look at Ant-Man 1, I mean, you know. Evangeline Lily's hair is all business. That's right. <laughs> That's right. I mean, she's not trying to get sexy, man. She's no. trying to like she's trying to climb the corporate ladder. That's exactly we're right. We're saving the world. That's exactly right. Right. <laughs> but even the villains, like they're not they're not crazy scary. There's not a lot of like really intense scary moments. There's not like you know intense battle scenes that are you know would make a child feel like nervous. I mean, it's really truly enjoyable. Like they focus on the, the lighter sides of the superhero world. Where are you at, uh, Bottle Cap Grade? I really loved it because I thought it was funnier than the first one. Yeah. Um, so, plus Paul Rudd's in it. So I'd probably go, I mean, I'm sticking with 4.5s today because right. I, that's a movie I can just watch over and over. It was hilarious. Yeah, it was, it was, it was I mean, it was top notch. I loved it. I, I feel like it's going to be hard to recap, which is odd. I don't know. I, I felt like there was so much like coming coming at us like relatively quickly throughout yeah the we're movie. no scientists on here by the pine so there's a lot of quantum <laughs> jumps and all this stuff it reminded you know. me of uh, the show quantum leap <laughs> yeah every yeah. time they said quantum yeah and there was a lot of quantums going on <laughs> where where are, you, where are you at Ryan I think for me it's it's still behind the first one I agree I mean, me and you I think we I, I enjoyed the first one so much and it was such a, a surprise to me you know just to, to watch Ant-Man and, and enjoy it as much as I have I think I, I think the second one one lacks in the villain a little bit. Um, I, 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 it's, it's really, it's really close to the first one, but I, I just feel like the first one for me is just something special. Kind of with Guardians, kind of has the same feel as Guardians to me. Like right. I, I think the second one is special. And I think it's great, but I think the first one is just, it, it's, 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 it's the first one. You know yeah. what I mean? It's the first. I mean, seeing Wasp take flight that was. was cool. Yeah. She yeah, was and so she's, she's awesome. Yeah, yeah. She was gnarly, but. Yeah. The development of Ghost was kind of weak. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, that's yeah, something that's, I was getting ready back to, to say. Back, back to the Marvel villains. I mean, she she is a very weak villain. I mean, I, I think we can all kind of, you know, so I got her on she's that. Kind of dying, Ryan. <laughs> that is true. That is true. She's, I she's was, got some kind of quantum thing going on. <laughs> I, I thought she was sweet, man. I, no, I she thought, looked cool. I, I thought Ghost was cool. cool. I, I liked her. I liked her powers. I, I, I loved the way she kind of like worked through, like you know, like kind of the gallery of heroes that she was going through. Like I, I liked Ghost, but I was like the first thing Chelsea said as we walked out there. She was like. They did not develop Ghost as a character. Yeah, what's well, so, like? She just shows up. And the way somebody dubs her Ghost randomly. Right. Yeah. Right. She's, she's almost like. Yeah, she's she's almost like, like a. She's like, almost yeah. like an added character. Like it's not like the the main plot of this story is getting is getting um, Hope's mom mom back. Right. Right. In this whole story, and that's and the the, the aspect of Ghost coming into it is more of an, an annoyance. Yeah. More than anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and the way like, they... Like an obstacle. Yeah, like they're just trying to get over that. It's and not and the way they it. dubbed her ghost, I was like, you know, I don't see her hanging out with Patrick Swayze. <laughs> no. Like, no. she didn't just take Molding over Whoopi play. Goldberg's body. <laughs> <laughs> and his whole, hey, like, dang, hey, good more. pull there, though. You got, you got like, Paul Rudd's body, though. Or, like, the whole, like, like that whole ghost kind of aspect oh, yeah, there, you know? Yeah, yeah, nice yeah. Pull, dude. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> So, I, like, the way they just kind of dubbed her ghost, I, I was just kind of like, man, that's a little that's weak. weak yeah. But she looked sweet, the suit was sweet, and the sweet, the suit is, like, directly out of the comics. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, very, I mean, it's, very like cool spot looking. on. Mm-hmm. So, I, I thought that was great. Jumping in, so you start off the movie with Paul Rudd is playing with his daughter, you find out he's under house arrest after what yeah, this is transpired... Set. After Civil War. Yeah, this is Civil War. Between Civil War and almost closer to Civil War than it is Infinity War. Yeah, yeah. It's, and, it, and you yeah. find out towards the end, it, it appears that it's happening at the exact same yeah. timeline as Infinity War. Yes. Like, everything is, like, happening in, in the same in this, it, like I said, in the same time frame right there. Which is kind of cool. It's kind of refreshing to see a movie that doesn't have... Um, a bunch of Marvel characters in it. It can stand alone. Yeah. It can stand alone on its own. You know, we got Ant Man. You got you got Paul Rudd playing Ant Man, and you see Ant Man and Wasp building that that um, that relationship. And we don't have to have a 
bunch of we don't have to have Iron Man in this movie. You know what I mean? Yes. We don't have to have Cap. Scott you know? references him <laughs> I mean, literally what twice. And that's we do about we it. do talk yeah. about Cap. We do talk about Cap. It's like Cap. I mean that's what we call him. I mean that's what we get. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that's, that's what we call him. Yeah. On Hero Side of Time, we call him Cap. Oh, dude, that that part was that part was great too. Yeah. It's <laughs> so funny. That that's kind of like really close in the timeline of where if we're gonna talk like the movie from start to finish, where you start off you see Scott Lang under house arrest and then shortly after he's abducted by Wasp mm-hmm. uh, Evangeline Lilly what, what's her character's name? Um, heck on it. What's her name? I don't want to say Dove. Hey, where's the producer? Yeah, yeah where's the producer? I don't want to say I know it's definitely not Hope 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 Hope. Is that no hope? Yeah, yeah, yeah hope. It's hope. hope. Yeah, it's hope. Yeah, that's right. You're right. But she has her mother's uh, maiden name. Yeah, she doesn't go by Hope Pym. Uh, so Hope abducts Paul Rudd, which right. I'm thinking, like, you know, he's eating cereal, watching TV, <laughs> and playing like, the drums. The and some, drums. <laughs> it's a very, it's a very like 40 year old virgin. It <laughs> is. It is. <laughs> Dude, I just rewatched that movie on Netflix, and I thought that while hope, we were hope watching Van, it, hope Van I was like, this hope is Van. like. Rewatching. Oh yeah, it is definitely. definitely. I hope Van Dyne. Uh, but I'm thinking as Scott Lang, like he's eating cereal, watching TV, <laughs> and like a, you know, a, you can tell like a bug is like buzzing around him. No. Like if you were Ant Man, could you ever trust anything ever again? No. Like every you, time you saw an insect, you would. You'd be like, wait. Try, you'd be like trying to talk to it. <laughs> right. Or, yeah. Or could you ever kill a spider again? Like, I don't know if you could. Definitely not. No, definitely, definitely not. not. No, definitely not. <laughs> Can we just jump to when he starts naming the ants? Oh, oh yeah. Like, that was just I'm the... naming you Antonio Banderas. You're, you're like, you're super tough. He's like, Antonio. It, Antonio. <laughs> yeah. It was so good. It was so good. Yeah. But... <laughs> you see as, like, Hope has ad- abducted him, they're in an automobile, and this is kind of, like, the first, like, joke that you, you realize how much they're going to utilize, like, the, you know, the growing and the shrinking of the characters. Yeah. So you see them talking, and then it's like this monster eye is peering in at them. <laughs> like, it looks like... And it's like, wait, are we watching Ant Man like or Godzilla. Jurassic Park? <laughs> right, right, right. right. It's like a big red eye. <laughs> and, and you you pan back, and it's a pigeon, and they're in like a micro machine. Yeah, it's like a matchbox car. Yeah, <laughs> they're just cruising around. I love that. I love that whole aspect. Like he's got like a mic. He's got like a Hot Wheels carrier. He's case. like, grab the like, Hot Wheels case. That was so <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I can relate to that because I have many of those around my house right now. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, that part was great, man. Was, that, that's great. Like, he picks the best possible car in that scene where he's like, just pick, grab the Hot Wheels case. <laughs> <laughs> it's a purple car with flames. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Classic when, Hot Wheels. <laughs> uh, yeah, when Le- <laughs> Luis is tearing it up, he's like, thank you, Dr. Pim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As far as character development goes, Luis might have been my favorite. Uh, they they took a little bit of time to develop his character and really get you like to fall in love with him. Well, and it took a little while before they got into his whole like delivery. You know, it wasn't yeah, until it took the truth uh, serum. Ryan, <laughs> look up who was the other villain. I want to say Sonny. Yeah, Sonny Birch. Yeah, Sonny Birch, and that and that again. That's another like I don't know how deeply Sonny. Yeah, Birch, what did what did he what did he? I mean, it's just that he the again villains was are an just, annoyance. Yeah, they really obstacle. were. Yeah, just something to create. You know, a, a, a car chase or yeah. right drama. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, like how deeply Sonny Birch ties in to. I don't even the remember comics. what happened to him. To tell you the truth, like at the end, did he just get hit with? He just got arrested. Yeah, yeah. 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 I remember yeah. they I mean, all have. They're like, it is yeah. truth serum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that part was great. That man. Was, he's like, it's not truth serum. The whole time, like they inject Louise with this serum, and it's basically just makes you tell the truth. And Ti and, so the, other, like, and the other dude are serum. like, they're like, I mean, walks like a duck, quacks <laughs> like a duck. It's truth serum. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the man that's developed it's so frustrated, but it, and you know, towards the end they get arrested and injected with it. And he's like, it is truth serum. It is <laughs> <It's> truth <laughs> <and> everything. 
I tell you what, that was like when when we first meet that character Sonny and we see Wasp kind of do work on his whole. Oh yeah, that was I think sweet. that I think that was one of the best parts of the movie for me. The salt I was, shaker, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that was, was awesome. Don't <laughs> like that. That was like a laugh yeah. out loud, yes. like oh, we clappable moment oh, yeah. for me. Like it, it there was, was many just, of those. Yeah, it was so great. So from there, you, you see Wasp do work. Yeah, and. You know, Scott Lang. She's looking for this part to to, to get into this quantum well, quantum oh, realm. They're, they're to, looking for yeah. a quantum reactor. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's, so that's what it is. Ellis is a scientist. Yeah. I've been aware. A quantum stuff. salt shaker. <laughs> I, I actually a while ago, me and Ryan were talking about uh, Interstellar. So I'm, I'm oh sure. yeah. I still haven't seen it, and I feel sad admitting that. It's all right. I mean, okay, because everyone I talk I to is like, oh, it's, it's amazing. It's you gotta great. see it. And so it's I'm like, I, I haven't seen that. But I was like, That's how I felt it didn't look that great. You know, I get so pretty Armageddon. upset with myself. Very Armageddon. Because I, <laughs> so you know, very, I said it's no Armageddon. And Ryan goes, it's very. Armageddon. <laughs> oh, I think it's very Armageddon. I was gonna say it's very Armageddon, just less Michael Bay. Is what it is. <laughs> it's no Armageddon. It's very. It's a tearjerker, man. Like there's a couple scenes. I'm like, oh my god. You're like, don't leave. Well, like, don't leave. Like ten minutes on this planet, I lost seven years of my life. <laughs> now the second part in a row we've I referenced know. Armageddon. <laughs> yeah, actually, I was thinking about that with the Garrett Gunn interview. I was like, I really should have labeled that as like, see how many Armageddon jokes our host Matthew Willis can fit in. Because like every other segment, I was like, Bruce Willis, Bob, Billy Bob Thornton, Armageddon. That's Armageddon. how we should have team, advertised team, uh, on on social media, like. How many Armageddon references <laughs> does Ellis make for this? And to find out. Yeah, and someone could have won a free t shirt. Someone could have won a free t shirt. Right. How many times does Ellis talk about Armageddon? Yeah. All right, on this episode, <laughs> win a t shirt. Like us on Instagram. That's right. Like us on Instagram. <laughs> drop, drop some knowledge on how many times we talk about Armageddon. But I always feel like a little out of touch with reality because I just I have such a hard time wrapping my mind around like space time continuum you know what I mean I think, everybody, I think everybody does <laughs> I think everybody, that's why we haven't figured it out yet if you watch Quantum Leap this would be no I gotta tell you what no the Van, Van Dines they make it look very very easy it's, oh. a, it's a bunch of levers and buttons and, and <laughs> yeah. this and, and like uh, uh, locker reactors. twisters and like, how does yeah, he, like locker twisters yeah, locker like, twisters whatever you want to call it like no I think I, that's, look, I think that's what it's called yeah so I mean you mechanisms know. are working I was just like there was a, Sam's like ho oh, hit the locker twister yeah, there was a couple of times like I rolled my eyes I'm like they were just like beep beep boop boop beep beep boop you know it's like lever pull down this that I'm like oh okay I mean, that makes sense that's science we are in Mars that is science that's <laughs> but I, I was trying to explain uh, space time continuum to Ryan oh yeah it's like okay. the ping pong ball and the way gravity works and uh, yeah that's like trying to explain sharing to my four year old son <laughs> it's not, it just, it's not I, I mean it just doesn't work you know? he's like but this is mine but uh, yeah <laughs> but the quantum realm Yes. So from there, they are uh, tracking down the quantum reactor. Right. And yeah, you and you see Hope Wasp do work. Yeah, that and was it's, awesome. It's Love great it. because we, we had talked about this with our producer as we were leaving the theater. And when Scott Lang first shows up with Hope and Hank Pym, and they're furious at him because they are now on the run from the law because he used Hank Pym's tech as Ant-Man. In Russia, was it Russia, right? Yeah. To break the, At the airport. Yeah. What was the accord? Sokovia. Sokovia. The Sokovia Accord. Yeah, because he They're used right. that. Dropping. Yeah. Right right now. Because yeah. he okay. used that tech, they are now on the run from the wall. Yes. And they they rope Scott Lang back in. All Scott Lang wants to do is be a father to his child. He's out of jail. He's like... He's like, dude, I gotta get home. I'm on house arrest. <laughs> and I shouldn't be speaking to you. Right. It's so great. And he's threatened with 20 years if he... I don't know I don't home. know why he's so Even threatened. if he even, like, contacts. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, when, I he, when it starts, his foot goes outside of the fence because he goes down <laughs> the slide right. that he's right. built for his child and he just busts right through and, of course, his line goes off and it's, it's, he panics. So it's like, this is a big deal that he's... 
Is that what it's really like being under house arrest, Chelsea? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why he's so like intimidated by that cop that like keeps coming to his house. Like that is the wackest like parole oh, officer. Oh, dude, ever. I like, love that. That's like, like the, he's that's terrible. What makes it so he's funny. from the office, right? Like yeah. he's from. I forget. His no, name. he's not from the office. Yeah, he's yeah. From, he uh, he was Jim's like. I think he was twin. in the office yeah. for a was little bit. I, I can't remember exactly what. I love he his played. voice. Like his voice is. But he's also awesome. in. Uh, what what did we say? Uh, off the boat. I think he writes and directs. Yeah. Off the boat and stars him. We just well. it's so like goofy, but like and his delivery is classic. And he played uh, Kim Jong Un in uh, Into the World. Oh, he did in the interview. Yeah, yeah, the interview. Yeah, Into the, interview, interview. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. the yeah. World is that uh, other media- movie with all the comedians. But like, like a party. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's incredible, and uh, but Hank Pym and Hope are like, you owe us, and I'm thinking like, does he? At the very least, you guys are just like even. <laughs> yeah, right. Because <laughs> without everything he risked, right. In the first Ant Man, I mean, you guys are like, you know, he essentially saved the world from this technology of micro assassins that was getting sold to Hydra. So I'm like, at the <laughs> very least, you guys are just like, let's say even. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Plus, he he did the he did the same thing that. Hope's mom did. He what's that? What's it? What, they well, jumped, they, well, made, they, they go they, super small and like yeah, yeah, and <laughs> whatever you want. Yeah, 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 whatever you want to call it, quantum uh, something. Now I, I will say that he <laughs> did that to save his daughter. Oh, that's true. You know, but I'm, I'm saying like, you know, they recruit this dude who's, you know, has kind of everything to lose, and he goes to it and does work. But in this, they're like, you owe us, that's and I'm right. like. Think he really does. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> right. I, you know, like I said, the very least you guys are just. You're I love yeah. it when his daughter's like, so, how long have you been Ant Man? <laughs> <laughs> she's like, I can tell you're back at it. Yeah, his daughter. His daughter's she's, super. Her cute. character's she's, great. She's so sweet. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There was a couple of liners like, I don't have any daughters, but I know Ellis was probably like, you know. Oh, like where she has yeah. to be his partner. Yeah, oh, come yeah. on, man. Oh, like, and then are you, you have the, you have the <laughs> like, seriously to be like, nah. Yeah, no. no. You're not. You're not strong enough. You're actually, weakling. Actually, uh, <laughs> jumping into when Hope like first kind of like we're jumping around a little bit. In this episode. Right. I, I knew it'd be hard to like kind of retrace this. Like, well, it's so opening. heavily dependent upon the first. Like, you kind of have to go see the first one, and it's all just kind of random. But I, uh, as soon as Hope shows up, Evangeline Lily, no longer all business, long hair, you know, living out of a, free. yeah, living out of a, uh, you know, a toolbox that they're like shrinking and blowing up, and, uh, <laughs> you know, doing all their work in their lab. <laughs> they, they, do, like they, do a, they do an awesome job with the whole shrinking and oh like, yeah, like, it, was that great. Was, it, it was it was like awesome. the malfunctioning of his suit. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. We I want to I want to jump that. into that. <laughs> I as, as, she, as soon as she shows up, long hair. Ryan just leans over to me. He's like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah. like, yeah. That's what I said to yeah. the producer when I saw Paul Rudd. Yeah. Uh, I was yeah. like, oh, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he, he went all out to show off his abs when he was sitting on off. the toilet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I was like there, there they are. He's too much of a hunk for you, though. Yeah, he's got thin out a little. That's right. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> need you to look like you missed a few meals. <laughs> <laughs> I look a little more stressed out. Uh, so... This is right around the time Ghost shows up. Yes, yeah, yeah. So when Hope is doing work with oh, yeah, Sonny Birch's right. Sonny Birch's crew, she and whoops, she, she gets all these dudes, and she he, gets the quantum. What did I say? The reactor. Yeah. Quantum. You know, that's yeah. called the yeah. reactor now. The, so the, other, like, the other stone, whatever. Yeah, the other the quantum stone. <laughs> so she gets that. Back. Goes on the knuckles now. Before and, this beer, he knew the names of everything. And <laughs> out of nowhere, you see ghosts just like transform through this wall. And I, I thought they did an incredible job with ghosts, like uh, visually? CGI. Yeah, visually, visually yeah. like it, it looked. Oh, awesome. like with the. I, I don't want to call it like like a stammer, but it was like where she. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, like it was like she was physically having trouble, like. Yeah, it's really good. It's all right. We're on camera. Remember last time I was like animated you were? You were like, he was like, pew, pew, pew. (laughs) But yeah, so Ghost shows up. She ends up with the quantum reactor. 
Uh, but she still needs the uh, she needs a lab. the lab wow. at this point, and uh, that's when Ant Man is like, you know, Scott Lang is like, I need to get in there, I need to help, and Hank Pym's like, here, I got this suit, like it's all like experimental at this point, and that kind of leads into when they have to go and find the old suit. Yeah, yeah. There's like there's something behind. I forget. Yeah, it's it's very <laughs> so like the <laughs> suit's malfunctioning. Yeah. It's not like completely operating correctly. I don't think that's the reason. Well, oh no, you know like, what? The, 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 like, I have an old. I have this. Like, you kept the suit. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> they thought they thought he destroyed <laughs> it and then shrank it down. And I, you <laughs> know, actually, <laughs> actually, she got the lab too. You know, Ghost got the lab. Ghost got the lab at this point. Mm. At that point, and then to find the lab, they have to have something from the old suit. And right. that's where, like, Scott Lang's like, and that's hey, where well, your favorite have... character came into play. Tiny Paul Rudd in the school? <laughs> no, Lawrence Fishburne. Uh, oh, because yeah. that was my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> stick, stick, to, stick to Perry White, Lawrence Fishburne. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Come on, man. He, say, he jumped ship, didn't he? He went straight from D.C. to, to Marvel. He's he like, yeah, this is fine. I'll say this, man. I, I kind of felt for Fishburne a little bit. I mean, his character was completely useless and unnecessary. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but Very. I was like, I understand why he was so attached to Ghost because she has never done porno like his real birth daughter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that real? Yeah. Yeah, that's oh, real. Oh, yeah, that's real. look it up. Um, but real. Not Mon- Montana, Montana Fishburne. <laughs> 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 I mean, how would you His feel? The only real role in the movie is to be the voice of reason for Ghost. That's it. That's the only thing. It's because, go- honestly, Ghost is like, I have a week to live. I could die at any moment. This man's not helping me anymore, and, even though he's promised that he will. And Jumping remember, into some bottle cap grapes. Oh, Are you guys out on the grapefruit? This yeah, one I'm very good. Five. Very, very, very good. I crushed my grapefruit. No, I had one. You gave it to me. I know, I know. You did oh, crack did, me open. Oh, did thing. you drink? <laughs> Oh, oh, I think I think we got I think we got some uh, I think got some of the grapefruit. Hey, For the grapefruit of wrath, I give a five. Oh yeah, that's good. It's delicious. That is good. That's Blows a patio pomegranate, like, like, which it is kills rare. me. Like I don't know how you guys do it. What's the I, I don't think mine. Was, I don't think my uh, home brew was a. Patio pounds. Yours is not. Yours is a sipper. <laughs> yours, like I said, yours is a drunker. Right. Yeah, yours, is a, sure. yours is a stumbling sipping. I swear. Right. Right. So I'm gonna take your uh, time. Use like, caution with this. This one, Florida doesn't have the ABV on the grapefruit. Yeah, right she doesn't want to know. She's like Ellis. So <laughs> like, it's just a blank bottle. This Here, drink. Get weird. You don't know. Uh, so Lawrence, Lawrence Fishburne's character, who has been on the outs with Hank Pym since their days Bill, in Bill Shield. Foster is his name. Bill Foster. Yeah. Yeah, so he explains to them, like, there could be a possibility to track down the lab if you had old tech yeah. that you had used when you were assembling the lab. At this point, Scott Lang, Paul Rudd states, like, well, I may still have the suit. So they and like, by may I mean it's taped yeah. to the bottom of my daughter's number one grandma. <laughs> <laughs> grandma. Grandma trophy. <laughs> so from there they go to track that down, they end up in the school and Chelsea take it from there. This is my favorite Paul Rudd. Um, probably because he's <laughs> small he was, and, and weak. weak. <laughs> 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 he's uh he's shrank to what, like Afton size, like two feet. Yeah. Like, yeah two yeah, feet tall. My daughter's Afton. She's uh, four years old and in the first percentile for her height. <laughs> 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 Only because she recently started eating vegetables and is now on the growth chart. So Paul Rudd is about the same stature, and he's got a huge, like, lost and found hoodie on. And <laughs> Visually, like, it's, it's perfect. Cool. It's it is so, so funny. It is awesome. And it uh, awesome it's the, the hoodie comes down just below his knees. I mean, the sleeves are, like, dangling. Every doorknob he encounters, he has to leap to try, <laughs> <laughs> to try uh, and turn yes. it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Wasp, basically, like everything else in life, has to help him with everything. But you can also and, see, uh, like, right at that moment, too, like, uh, Wasp, Hope, and Scott have been, like, on the outs, but you could kind of see this like 
all of a sudden they're making eyes. Uh, yeah, with hope especially. Yeah, like she's yeah. kind of like, okay, like I. That's still because he was hope. weak and vulnerable. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a weird, it's a weird attraction to be with. It's just what that is. is it kind of like dad bod when dad it bod is. became a thing? Yes. Everyone's like, okay, like this isn't intimidating because that's like, exactly it. Like if you're dating a guy that's like Brad Pitt and Fight Club, that's intimidating right you but have it, to be doing sit-ups you have to be eating your vegetables <laughs> you have to be at least hot enough to where people are like well if it makes sense they're together right because it's okay for a guy to be with a chick that's hotter but it's like <laughs> it's like socially all, all i gotta say is come <laughs> to the heroes by the pine listen to the glassy eyed geeks and, and get some knowledge get some knowledge about relationships struggles that's right. that's right it's a struggle you know like like I actually, this is not to get totally off track, but I watched a, uh, a study about how, where, where people, they basically lined up people that were rated by a, a bunch, like 500 people rated them on a number scale. And women typically try to date two numbers down. Oh, man. Where men are totally like, comfortable we're like, dating we're like two numbers men. up. Yeah. Like, like, we're quantum men. like, that's all right, then I'm yeah. a little sloppy. She's hot. Uh, <laughs> yes. I mean, Ryan. Yeah, here we go. Eric there we Brown go. just blew it out of the water. <laughs> she was like, you know what? I'm just like, let's go a few more numbers down. Yeah, that's right. right. Like, I want this guy to really be dependent upon me. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. That's so right. Wasp sees uh, Ant Man in this moment. You know, Scott's completely vulnerable, meek, and a little pathetic. And she's like, you know what? You're adorable. And pretty cute. Yeah, 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 yeah you're cute. still pretty hot. And. He's like, we got some uh, goldfish and uh, she has to help him yogurt. get that. She has, <laughs> juice boxes yeah. or something. she has to help him get that backpack down. He's like, you really have that? <laughs> oh yeah, when he jumps, when yeah. they finally get back in, he's got the suit, and they finally get back into the the, the van. Yeah. Van. <laughs> and then Pim's like, you need a juice box. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, shut up. Yeah. He like, can't even get in the car. Oh, how, great, how great was Michael Douglas? Michael Douglas is just like kind of made for that role. Oh, he does a great job, oh, yeah. man. I'll say this, like, man, you want to talk about some beautiful old people. Yeah, really. Yeah. Michael oh, Douglas man. and Pfeiffer. Yeah, Michelle yeah, Pfeiffer. Yeah, Michelle Pfeiffer. Which she was, she was underutilized in this movie. Like, we could have got, I, I could have used a lot more Michelle Pfeiffer in this movie. Yeah. Like, yeah. Real like really. In every movie. I wanted, well, to see, yeah, really. I wanted to see her come out of the quantum realm doing backflips. Yes. And hit it with a meow. Oh, yeah. She That's like, all I wanted. She looked good. Been she looked really good. Been cool. Yeah. All, she all looked like through. Lindsay Lohan before she was on probation <laughs> with like silver hair. She was like really good. Michelle <laughs> Pfeiffer could have even been like the ghost. Like some yeah. like in a twisty. Oh, that I was I was like, wondering if that I did was too. going to like transspire that, that, early on. That that was like they they revealed her like really quick. They yeah. Did yeah. The and and again I, I just I liked Ghost. I liked Ghost a lot. I really did. I, I just they, they didn't develop any of the antagonists throughout this entire film. It, yeah. it was just like they, they, I think you guys both said it best, they, they were just kind of like stepping stones yeah. towards the ultimate goal of bringing back Hope's mother. Right. And, uh, and I think rekindling the relationship between Scott and Hope. The, right. The ultimate goal of the movie was like, let's bring back her mom, let's, uh, let's rekindle this. Right, right. You know, no, I agree. This I lost agree. Flame. Janet, Janet, is her name? Janet, Janet Van Dyne. Yeah, Janet Van Dyne. That's right. And Jeez. what was she doing? Like, like, like it, that was like an anti-aging quantum realm too. Like anti-aging. Like I mean, anti. Her hair got gray. I guess that's true. What did she, she eat while good. she was there? Did she, she, she eat? Now she's a vegan. <laughs> I mean, it looked like she lost one of her some wings. Like, some like weird slugs, like yeah. those slug things. Like, yeah, she ate those slug things. things. <laughs> uh, this movie is definitely like way before your guys' time. But do you remember <laughs> Inner Space with Martin Short and Dennis Quaid? That's what I thought of in the quantum realm. Like, I don't. I know. Where's Marty? But that's yeah, where's Tony? I am old. I am old. <laughs> and that was my grandmother's favorite movie. I love. I do love film. Martin Short though. though. Yeah. 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 Dennis Quaid, man, you can't Dennis go wrong there. That's a great like Dennis Quaid. Yeah, yeah, there you go, like the rookie. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so around around this time, uh, they are then tracking down Ghost, and you realize that uh, Bill Foster. Mm-hmm. At, at this point, they get set up 
they track down Ghost. They're in there. They find. They're trying to yeah. They're trying to get the lab back. Yeah, they find the lab the, uh, and they find stuff. the uh, quantum reactor. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Process of reactor. <laughs> The thing, the thing you slip into the slot and turn it, and, and it works. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, but then you, you find out that Bill Foster is actually. Let me just hold on. Wait, are you talking about <laughs> Lawrence Fishburne's daughter again? No, no, <laughs> okay. no I didn't even know that existed. No I, I really did. Like, <laughs> he was just talking about the thing you slip into the slot. <laughs> And then oh, you twist it, it. <laughs> and then you, uh, We are gonna get sued. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> we just had an in-depth talk. <laughs> www.xxx.com <laughs> About our foul language. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, like, right. we just had a really in-depth talk. With our, yeah. And, uh, we're doing pretty good. We're handling it. We're doing it. We're trying uh, to fit the I can goal. see him like shaking Not his head right now on Skype, like He's no. like, <laughs> <laughs> like no. <laughs> no. We just, we just <laughs> talked about this. Just, more <laughs> Literally, this right now. <laughs> Sorry, Rob. Yeah. It's like it's like a it's like a parent. It's I, I'm sure you've both been there. Oh yeah, no, I have. Very much like, so. I just told you. How many times have I said <laughs> no cheese sticks? <laughs> Why did you go and get one? <laughs> and then my daughters like they instantly like they oh, know they're, they're in like, hungry. So Jesus. then they start like crying, and they're like, "We love you." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they cry to the point where you have to comfort them. No, but, you don't. No, you don't. See, but also don't think, deprive them of the opportunity to be sad. Oh man, you are so emo. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I say that to my kids all the time. <laughs> I'm not going to deprive you of the opportunity to feel frustrated or the opportunity to feel sad. <laughs> So you cry it out, you piece of crap. <laughs> oh, God. Ryan over Go here. Go put your black lipstick on and then come back to like, I, I used to be like, anytime my kids stubbed their toe, I'd, I'd comfort them. And then actually my ex, uh, who's really a great dude and a smart guy and a teacher and stuff who deals with kids all the time, was like, you're depriving them of the opportunity to deal with sadness. And I was like, oh, man, oh, you're right. And my mind was like kind of blown, and I was like, you know what? It's okay. Yeah, how they are they? How sad. are they ever going to discover? How are they ever going to early two thousand? Or Paramore? How are they going to have high stage with like the like, song playing when right. they put it up? And their top eight on there with that's, the that's right. black that's right. stick and the hot topic clothes? They're not. If I don't let them be sad. Absolutely, man. <laughs> that's why. That's why Hope was trying to let Scott. Just kind of be sad for yeah, a while. Yeah, he needed it. He, he needed, needed to, to go sad. through the moments in life where you have the opportunity to feel sadness. And we have to talk about like why Scott's never getting in trouble because he doesn't have his ankle bracelet on. <laughs> He's got a huge <laughs> why? why is that? <laughs> like the drums in his house. <laughs> is it Anthony? Is it was uh, it Anthony? Anthony. And well, Anthony, was Anthony was the one like he flew on in the first one. I can't. Yeah, remember. I think Anthony actually died in the first. Yeah, one. yeah. Well, then like two five got yeah R.I.P. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, a bunch of them got eaten in this one. Oh yeah, but oh. those Burlo Seagulls. Antonio yeah, Banderas yeah. and what was the other one? <laughs> was it the next president? Yeah, it was, was it was Ulysses? Ulysses. Aunt Grant. Yeah. 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 Ant. Yeah. Gant. Yeah. 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 That was my favorite one. No, because he called out you know, to it as well. He was like, "You, Lizzie's not saying." I heard. Or I, I read. I read that Paul Rudd actually did some of the writing for this movie, and I think he wrote, I, he wrote a lot of the first one. I think. I think like some. You can see some of his like comedy coming out of this movie. And you I think, can see I think the it's, moments. I think it's awesome. Like I think yeah. it's so. I think it's so great. You can really see the do. moments where he delivers a joke, and he's like. Yeah, that was my joke. Like, hey, he's like, like that one's extra funny. Paul Rudd's like this one right here. That's moving me into someone's top. <laughs> <laughs> I want to. I want to talk about like where do you guys see like you know how we're, we're watching these movies anymore and we see so much comedy in these movies. We, I mean, you, you talk about That's like you, I mean, we see you go back to I guess I guess you don't see them. You don't see much in Black Panther, but you you still see some think... comedy. You still see, but. I think Avengers, um, in Infinity War, we see a lot more comedy. Look like, at Thor as a character. Yes, I like mean, Thor yeah, Ragnarok. His character development as a and, whole, and he started out. What so do you What do you serious, guys think about so that? Like, how, how do you feel? How do you feel about this whole comedy like turn that has has? I mean, because I went back today. I actually I was watching Avengers with my with my boy today. He was like all he's all kind of like into Hulk and Iron Man right now, and. 
I was watching the first Avengers. There is not a lot of comedy other than no. Tony Stark. Like, yeah. there, there's not a lot of comedy. Thor and is Tony not, he is not is Thor like, Ragnarok Thor. He no. Is, and you see, like... Um, and Tony's satirical. He's yeah, not, and he's, he's more, yeah, so he's much, more uh, of a butthole than he like, is. Like, lighthearted. Yeah, he's, that's right. He's sati- I like hey, that. Look whatever. at you going, dude. You're going to <laughs> yeah, do this. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to think uh, I'm going to edit it in yeah. asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bleep it, out, but. That's right. I'm going to bleep out when you said but. I know. I know. I know. But almost sounds worse than ass. Because I'm, I'm, emba- I'm embarrassed for you, right now, Ryan. Oh, okay. no, what did I say? What did I say? Uh, Erica settled for because it's lower, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like I'm at like a five. We're like a four point right six right now. And every time you say, "Don't leave me, babe." Please. <laughs> I won't be a butthole anymore. <laughs> I, won't be, I won't be a butthole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. The question is how many times can we say it? All right. <laughs> follow us on Instagram and let us know how many times Ryan said butthole. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. That's right. You can win a free t-shirt, and we promise you that. We have girls' shirts and guys' shirts as well. And uh, You just have to tell us how many times he said it. <laughs> That's right. But you have to listen to the end credits because he might just blast it off. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't want to. Don't it's like it's like it's more nose. uncomfortable than ass. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. I felt how uncomfortable it was yeah. the whole time you've been yeah. saying it. <laughs> uh, I think right here is as good a spot as any to end part one and get ready for part two. We'll review the rest of Ant Man, the second part of Ant Man. Before we do that, let's jump into our weekly comic poll sponsored by Secret Identity Comics located at 34 North Franklin Street in Delaware, Ohio. You can find them at Secret ID Comics on Facebook, Instagram, and I believe anywhere. That's their... That's their website, too. Yeah, that's Secret their Secretidentitycomics.com, Yeah, that's, the, that's their web handle. So we are talking weekly comic polls, and I don't think there's anything more important to talk right now than 50. That's right. The wedding. <laughs> so I got a, I got a story for you guys. I got to throw this Let's out there. It. So I had this old uh, Christmas ornament that I've had since I I, I can't I, I honestly I think six seven years old. Is My it mom. The Batmobile. Yes. But I it's have like, the same it's one. It's the blue. Yeah. Oh, you have the same no, one. No doubt. Okay. I, knew. I was like, I know it's this got, one. It's got Batman and Robin in it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Holy cow. But anyway, somehow my kids got in. They, they somehow have this ornament now. What? The wheel is busted off of it. Oh. Robin is no more. He, he's no longer in the passenger seat anymore. It's just Batman with the wheel busted off. Man. So I've been singing this song. Jingle bells, Batman smells, <laughs> Robin, <laughs> Batman, <laughs> Batmobile lost his wheel. Dude, I came downstairs the other day and my little boy, my littlest one, I, got a, I have a five-year-old and I have a two-year-old. And my, my, my two-year-old is like, <laughs> he's like, Batmobile, watch this, we a Joker, I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> Dude, I about melted. I was ready to, I was just, I was just so happy. I just thought that was so funny. Because cause actually the, the ornament, the wheel busted off and like, it oh, just, yeah. just, just tore yeah. up. So Dude, my, uh, I just last, had to get that out there. Last Christmas, my son kind of did the same thing, but I didn't even teach him the song. Oh, he right. came home from kindergarten, he's like. Uh, jingle bells, Batman smiles, Robin. But anyway. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I was like, dude, send me back. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Shouldn't be up. talking like that. Don't you speak that way about Batman? <laughs> <laughs> Do you Never. know it's Bruce Wayne? <laughs> I know, you don't. right? You don't. My kid's like the biggest Batman fan. It's kind of depressing. Uh, I like Batman. I'm just, you know. I know. I have Superman all over my room. I mean, Superman is everywhere. I mean, you guys know. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm like a huge Superman fan, but like Batman for them is like the number dude. one. I'm like, are you kidding me? Batman's the best. He on. is. He really is. They, I mean, they're good. smart. What they're, smart. They're, they're smart. They're smart. <laughs> Smarter than their daddy. But yeah, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Probably, I, hope, I really hope so. We've already talked about this. I, I, I hope genes. so. <laughs> I promise you those two dudes... <laughs> when, they're, when they're in a room by themselves, they're not calling each other b-holes. I <laughs> promise you that. <laughs> b-holes worse than butthole. I feel like b-holes. <laughs> my vocabulary is a lot better. better. My vocabulary is a lot better be- than butthole. B-hole? But like... <laughs> what? <laughs> Are you two? <laughs> Man, we can't even say butt on here. My daughter says, <laughs> Flora, 
<laughs> Thank you so much. That's right. Flora's Brewing Dandering Road Rash and the Grapefruit IPA is working. The Grapefruit Rash. It's the rap is real. Oh, I'm crying. Oh, I'm literally yeah, I'm crying too. Did you say beautiful? I know, I thought bubble sounded bad. It did until now. So I was just one up to you. Yeah. <laughs> I swear it still sounds cooler. It doesn't. Just because you said be like be a hole, it doesn't make it cooler. Well, I couldn't be talking about anything. That starts with a B. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> no. Just saying. No. 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 <laughs> oh my god. Batman, Where are we? Bat- Batman 50? Yeah. You know Batman about 50. Yeah. We- so weekly comic polls were leading up to the wedding. Uh, I feel like this is... I feel like this is like a tough segment. Because to yeah. me, this is very much like also news of the week, which we're going to get into... At the top of part two, should we jump into it there? Because we're going to be talking. Sure. Uh, so we should just call it all the wedding. Yeah. I mean, just, we could talk about where forty nine left off. Yeah, let's yeah, yeah let's jump into like forty nine and uh, leading up into fifty. You had the wedding and Batman fifty and Catwoman number one. The wedding issues actually finally drop on the fourth of July this week. Where are you guys at with it? Where am I at? I, I mean, it's you're pretty much left off where you were at with 48 and 49. I mean, there's there's really not a whole lot that 50 explains to you other than you get, like, this anniversary kind of... You get a bunch of different covers where they missed out on a bunch of, like, variant covers, honestly. Right. Like, but, I mean, it's, a, it's a celebration of Catwoman and Batman's relationship is what it is. And you don't get a lot of answer or a lot of questions answered other than... Do they get married or not? I guess we can talk about that in our next episode. Yeah, because like, forty nine left you hanging. It does. Forty nine left and you. And I think like, honestly, I think forty, I think forty nine honestly gives you more answers than actually fifty does because you see at the very end you see Catwoman with these green eyes, and you see her laughing kind of like the Joker, kind of crazy. And I almost feel like Joker has his hand in this whole wedding, and I don't, I don't know he if he does, does or not, but I'm pretty sure. Like, why would you? Not? I mean. There is no, like, without Batman being this depressed human that is, you know, I mean, there, there is no Batman. It can be Batman. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what Joker right. says. That's it's right. like, you'll bring him happiness. That's right. And, and I, with and I, happiness, there's no Batman. He can't right. be happy and be Batman. And I think that's where that's where 49 leaves you off. And, and 50 is almost like a celebration of, of, like I said, a Batman-Catwoman relationship where it doesn't answer much. And we'll see in 51 where this goes because... Honestly, I have no idea. I think Joker is behind this, and I think so he Tom, sabotaged this. Honestly. So Tom King has a hundred issue run on Batman. This is the midpoint of Tom King's run. How I mean, how are you feeling about it as like a midpoint? Do you are are, are you enjoying the Tom King run? There's things that I really don't like about it. I. Full disclosure, I haven't made it all the way through 50. I'm reading the entire preludes right now, which i got to say I am enjoying the preludes, like the uh, Robin vs. Ra's al Ghul, the Nightwing vs. Hush was great, uh, Batgirl vs. Riddler was great. And, and like I, Batman's, <laughs> Batman's spawn, I mean, they've gone all over the place. Yeah, I mean, they've really Batman been Metal. like... Ultimately, I... Uh, Capes and Lunatics sidekicks, I was listening to their podcast, and, and I kind of agree with Phil and Lilith that this really feels like a cash grab by DC. It, it does. It feels like they've been building this up, yeah. and they just they haven't done with it what the fans want. And then also on top of that, I just, I, I don't know. I'm not going to lie. Like, it reminds me a lot of Lady Thor. Yeah. Where it's like, all right, she's dead. <laughs> and then it's like, next time. You know, like, every time... I, she and almost... I think, honestly, follow, though, I, I, think like, it, I think it almost is, like, kind of genius, though, if you think about it. Because everybody... Like, even when I talk to you guys, it's like, you know, they've done a good job of building this relationship where you almost believe it. Where yeah. you almost say, like, okay, well... I yeah, believe they, they should get They should I get I do married. believe it. I'm like, I want them to... Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> believe it. I want Batman to be happy. Yeah, he's not going to be. I believed it more in Hush. 
Yeah. I believe their relationship more in Hush, where Selena doesn't realize that Bruce Wayne is Batman. In fifty, Batman, in fifty, like, there's there's really yeah. there's really there's really, everything. there's really cool there's really cool dialogue where, awesome. <laughs> yeah, honestly, and that, and then once you guys read fifty, you'll see like there's some really good dialogue between Alfred and Bruce, and um, Selena and Holly. I forget her name. She was in like in the past issues. I forget her name. Holly something. But anyway, she says something on the lines of, um, so or or Catwoman says something about like, oh, so I I guess you are a hero now. And Selena says, "Like, well, I guess I am." She, I, Catwoman, has always been that mysterious middle road. Where is she a hero or is she not? You know uh, what I mean? And I mean, I say no. I say she's yeah, always I mean, been like, uh, and that's you know, the thing. Chelsea's favorite characters. I, I just Catwoman is self-serving. She's yeah, and that's the thing. She's definitely, and that's and that's. And there's what, moments where she's heroic, and there's moments where she's completely evil. And that's right. the thing. You marry Bruce Wayne, and you marry Batman. Are you're a hero now? Right, and then Alfred has this. And she'll never function as a hero. That's why in forty nine she was like, yeah, you know, even just this. It was the smallest little quip, but the Joker was like, she goes, "I wish you could see my dress. It's so pretty." And he's like, "Did you like? Where did you get it?" And she's and she tells him that she stole it. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, "Does he know that?" And she's like, "No, he'd be so (laughs) mad at me, right? Because she'll never be a hero, right?" And that's and and it was just the smallest line in forty nine, but it. There's a couple indication that like she'll never be that. See, I had such an issue with forty eight. Like, I just don't like the way Tom King has, like, kind of drawn out the way Batman reacts to things. I mean, you have in 48, Batman breaks through the glass windows of a cathedral where the Joker has just murdered eight people, point Mm -hmm. blank. Mm -hmm. And he's standing amongst corpses. And Batman's just playing this cat and mouse game with him. Like, to me, like, that's just not... Batman. Whatever. That's Batman and the Joker, period. It's always yeah. a cat and mouse game with them. Yeah, like, but I think he'll like, never kill the Joker. But you he don't could think... easily be like, Wah! Dead. <laughs> he's not gonna do that. <laughs> like without the Joker, he's nothing. That's right. No, I understand that, but I just don't think like so he would he's walk like, in and be what like, are you, What are you doing in here with all these dead people? Right. You know, like, that's what he's gonna do. That's a Bruce Wayne thing to do. That's a Batman thing to do. Uh, one thing I I do like uh, Tom King's uh, depiction of the Joker, like it's absolutely psychotic. Yeah, totally psychotic, and and it looks like and Tom King too. is yeah. the dialogue. Like you were saying, Ryan, like the back and forth is really quality. Like it even is. in forty nine, like how much of that comic are. Bat, or the Joker and Catwoman just literally laying next to each other. That's right. That's and he's right. like, remember the good old days? Like, <laughs> you remember this? You remember that? Like, the dialogue is, it's amazing because, um, I mean, he's able to carry you through, like, any... There's some there's some really good points in, in 50. There's a, there's a really good scene, a couple, a couple different scenes, actually, with Alfred and Bruce that are, like, you know, I mean, give you kind of goosebumps a little bit. Like, he talks about his dad, and, like, Alfred talks about... He's actually putting on the tux, and and Alfred and and Bruce is like, man, I, I I can't wear this. I look too much like my dad. And Alfred's like, yeah, you you actually do, sir. You, you know so much. Like, and it's just kind of one of those things that's kind of cool. And then and then there's this scene like when that's <laughs> right. Too rough. And then there and there's and there's actually a really cool. There, there's a good scene that, to go along with the Catwoman like conversation that's over here talking about being a hero. There's a conversation about Alfred and. Uh, and uh, Bruce talking about like being happy, and he's like, I, I after everything you've been through, like you have to be happy after this, right? And Bruce kind of just like kind of looks at, he's like, well, yeah, I guess. And it it, it just it, you can't have a Batman. That's what it comes down to. You can't have a Batman where he's actually happy because he's gonna hang up the cow. He's gonna hang up the cape and cow, and he's not gonna be Batman anymore. Yeah, you know. So it, it, I, it, there's there's times there's times when I when I when I, when I read it and I, I I go back to with you Ellis like 48 I was like man come on like that like you know Batman's looking kind of weak in this in this but Tom King does it he does a good job sometimes too man and I'm like holy cow like 50 is a it's a it's a good book it really is it's 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 a classic for sure I'm yeah. glad I'm glad I have it. yeah yeah I'm excited couple. to read it I feel horrible that I. <laughs> Man, it's don't. been on my mind so hard. You don't oh, yeah. even know. I mean, like, it's you know. all I can think about, and yet somehow I managed to not have ten minutes to sit down and read it. Please do not feel horrible because we have been doing <laughs> yeah more flipping homework. I have stacks and stacks of trades yeah. right, right now to read for homework. Homework. Yeah. <laughs> it's like being back in 
Great. It's like the best. It's like the best homework. <laughs> no, yeah, it's, 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 but it's still stressful. Yeah, it's also like that's anxiety. right. Well, you don't want to be the one that didn't read like the one. Book. Yeah, like you two <laughs> schmucks over here. Yeah, like, I thought you were gonna say butthole. <laughs> <laughs> be holes over here. Be holes. <laughs> All right. I All right. We are going to cash out of this episode. This is the end of Ant-Man and Wasp Part 1 review. Make sure you tune back in this Thursday as we jump right back in with Part 2 review of Ant-Man and Wasp. We'd also like to urge each and every one of you to head over to heroesbythepint.com. Over there you will find a backlog of all of our old episodes, links over to all of our social media sites, as well as links over to anywhere you'd like to stream your podcast. Scroll to the bottom of that page, click on that microphone banner, and hit us with a little bit of beer fund money. It goes a long way to supporting this podcast. Make sure you support each and every one of our sponsors. That is Shirts on Tap, Secret Identity Comics, and Short Fuse Media Group. All right, this is the Heroes by the Pint podcast, and we are out.